Good morning all. Today I'm looking at a thermal imaging camera. This is the Top Don TC004. It's a gun style thermal imaging camera which has its own built-in LCD and it's a high resolution sensor in here 256 by 192. A quick look at what's in the box. There's a case there's a product certificate and there's also a calibration certificate, UK, uh, plug-in USB power supply, a USB to type C cable and also a 16 gig um, micro SD card. So let's peel the screen protector sheet, um, install the micro SD card into the slot on the top here and switch the unit on. Press and hold the power switch for a few seconds. Uh, the screen comes on. It does take a little while to boot up. There's obviously um, quite a bit of software in here. And here it is on with the display running. Right, let's put my hand on the green mat here and just transfer some heat to it and uh, there you can quite clearly see my hand print and that will remain for as long as the heat stays in the mat. Okay looking around for something warm if I tip the camera up you can see there my IHD that's my in-home display for the smart meter uh, the hottest point of that is max 25.9 and that's also what the top of the temperature scale is set to. The minimum temperature the camera can see is the green marker there, that's 17 point something. It's also mirrored down here, 17 degrees. So the scale is constantly changing between the min temperature that the camera is seeing and the max temperature that the camera is seeing. The temperature up here, 18.6, is the center temperature, which is the white marker here. This is the battery display symbol. No problems with uh, batteries running out on this thing because it's got a built-in 5 amp hour lithium battery. And here you can see the emissivity is set to 0.95. Now you can see I've turned my uh, torch on here, my flashlight, and the camera is starting to pick that up. Uh, around 25 degrees at the top of the flashlight there. Okay, let's go through these keys here. Uh, this is the playback button, so JPEGs and H.264 videos that you record on the SD card. You can play them back here. This uh, is a little light switch if you press it for a second. Two LEDs, white LEDs come on on the front of the camera. Press it again to turn them off. Um, this is the on-off switch and this is the back button. If I press the middle button of the joystick area here, it goes into the menu system. And there are three parameters this, uh, to this. Uh, measurement parameters, your choice of palette, and a settings menu. So let's start with palette because that's relatively straightforward. You've got uh, the black and white ones where it's white hot. Or you can also choose black is hot, you've got iron, and you've got rainbow. So just four palettes, it's kept relatively simple. This is really all you need. So that's white is hot, that's black is hot. Iron, which is the uh, palette that you normally see on thermal imaging images, and rainbow, which is just a bit more colorful. So uh, I'll leave it on iron, press the back button to get out of that one. Back to the measurement menu. Uh, this is also very simple. You can choose whether to have the white spot on, the red spot on, that's the max, the green spot min on, or on this one, you can actually disable all the spots and have no measurement markers on there at all. Uh, curiously, you have to individually switch these back on, but it doesn't take too long. Okay, let's go back and now across to settings. And in here, there's a fair bit more stuff. I'm just going to take a quick look at the manual. It highlights um, the elements on the front and the elements on the rear, the switches mainly, items included. Um, how to use the camera in USB mode, so connect it to your PC via the USB cable. Specifications, facts 
and that's pretty much it. So the point is, there's nothing in the manual about、um, all these menu elements.、Uh, you just go through it and work it out for yourself. So. So in measure parameter, you've got emissivity. Now you can pretty much leave it at 0.95. There are some materials that have a different emissivity, but then you start getting into complex areas like reflectivity.、Um, so probably best just to leave it there.、Uh, temperature is the ambient temperature of the room, which can affect readings.、Um, distance is the distance you are away from the object you're measuring. I've set mine to half a meter.、Um, this.、Uh, Is used because as the、uh, infrared energy comes off an object、um, over long distances or over distances, it disperses because of、um, the atmosphere, the air. So it does a slight modification of the temperature reading based on how far away you are from the object. This is to get the temperature reading as accurate as it can. Temperature scale. There are two temperature scales:、uh, minus twenty to one hundred and fifty degrees C for low temperature objects, or one hundred to three fifty degrees C for high temperature objects. And when you、uh, change this setting, it takes a little while to reconfigure the camera. High and low alerts. Fairly self-explanatory. You can switch on an alert if you you see a temperature above a certain number. Switch on a an alert if you see a temperature below a certain number. An LED alert. I don't know. I assume it turns on these front LEDs. Photo setting is you can either auto save the photos or you can ask for a confirmation screen. A temperature unit gives you Celsius, Fahrenheit, also Kelvin if you want to use Kelvin. Uh, the next few are very straightforward. You can set the date and time here. That's for time stamping the images. You can set the language. Just check how many languages there are. Oh, there are quite a few of those.、Uh, display brightness. I think, as I said, there are three levels. Auto timeout after a period of time. And system settings. Oh,、uh, you can factory reset the unit. You can format the SD card. You can go into USB mode so that、um, this is a. It works like a webcam. And then you can have live images transferred to the PC. Although, of course, you're subject to the length of your USB cable, and there's、uh, some device information on firmware versions,、uh, memory capacity, and the serial number. Now, just looking at the resolution of this camera, this heatsink has been on the central heating radiator to warm it up, and、uh, you can see here that there is a fair bit of detail there. So you don't need、um, an optical camera because older thermal imaging cameras had an optical camera, and you could mix the optical image with the thermal image because it was very difficult to see from the thermal image what you were actually looking at. So you needed the optical image、uh, blended over the top of it、um, to see what you're looking at. But with this, there's absolutely no、uh, issue with resolution. It's pretty clear what we're looking at there. And here's a side-by-side -side comparison of、uh, the thermal imaging camera on the right、um, with an older generation thermal imaging camera on the left, which had a resolution of just 60 by 60 pixels, and that's why they gave you the option to overlay the optical image because if you look at just the thermal image, it's very difficult to see what you're looking at. I mean, compare the detail when you've got 256 by 192. Pixels. It's a completely different ball game. Right. Let's take a couple of、uh, JPEG JPEG images of this heatsink, and you can see my、uh, flashlight just above the heatsink. So I'll just pull the trigger briefly. Now you get the confirmation box there. Save. If I want to save that, I press the middle button. That's fine. I could get rid of that by、uh, having the auto save thing. So I'll just reposition that and get、uh, one more image. By pressing the trigger, save, press the middle button to confirm that I want to save that. And now we'll have a quick look at the desktop software where you can reanalyze these images. So let's connect the、uh, USB Type C connector into the socket on the top of the camera. Head over to the PC and see what we can see. So here we are in TD View. Now you can download this software from Top Don's website, Top Don. dot com.、Um, it'll start you off with a couple of folders here, but they're in program files. So I added another folder which I just put on my desktop called Top Don, and in there I've got those two 
images that I took from the thermal camera. I just transferred them from the SD card over to this folder. Now in here you can see that you've got um, the JPEG files, but you've also got these IRG files, and that contains the raw thermal image data, so that when you open these, you can do more with them than just look at the JPEG. So let's take a look at, well, let's look at this one. Um, for some reason, this doesn't go full size screen, but you've got these uh, various uh, controls here to look at multiple images at once. And if you do that and then go back to the image, it comes up full size, not quite sure why. Um, on here, we can do things like take a measurement at an arbitrary point there. We can also draw a line and it'll give you minimum and maximum temperatures on that line. We can draw a square and it'll give you minimum and maximum temperatures in that region. And you can add as many of these um, elements as you want as a circular one there and so on. And I can delete all of those if I choose to. Now, because we're looking at the raw thermal imaging data and not just the JPEG, we can actually change things like the palette. So I can have this in a white hot um, palette or black hot, which actually looks a bit more like a black and white uh, visual image. Um, I can also have rainbow, and there are some here that aren't even on the camera, like lava, and this one, which is red gray. So it's essentially black and white, but with uh, red elements for the highest temperatures. Um, other things you can do here, rotate the image, save the image, save it, save the data as CSV, um, or export a report in Word format. There's also this, which is a nice um, 3D image. So you can see here, we can take a look at the 3D uh, data. I'm just spinning it around using the right uh, button on my mouse. And you can very clearly see the heat sinks fins there, but as a 3D heat model. Now, as you can imagine, um, like most software suites, there's an absolute mass of stuff you can do in here. So I'm gonna leave it there, keep this video reasonably short. And I'll look now at some use cases that I've put the thermal imaging camera to, to actually get some useful things done. So the first use case for the thermal imaging camera is this cryptocurrency miner, which runs for a while, but then crashes. And I'm thinking it might be the control board on the top here, because the main hashing boards down there, we'll have a look at them through the thermal imaging camera, um, they're hot, but they're cooled by the uh, centrifugal fan at the back. So it's expected that they're hot and their temperature is uh, 60 degrees. That's entirely normal. But what about this controller board? Um, I'm getting a high temperature on there of about 30 degrees. And I'm just wondering if that's a bit hot. And um, I'm, I'm thinking most of the heat there is probably coming from the system on a chip and it's not actively cooled. The uh, controller board on the top there has no fan cooling. The little fan on the front there is to cool the um, uh, power supply components on the hashing boards. But I could perhaps put a piece of pipe behind this fan and run it into the covered area on this controller board, and that might uh, blow enough warm air out of that to cool it down. It actually works if it's sitting here um, with no cover, but I have made this wooden uh, piece that sits on the top, and I just wonder whether it's getting so hot under that cover that that's why um, it's losing contact with the internet. And it stops mining cryptocurrency, but uh, curiously, it carries on with the ASICs hot. Uh, so it carries on using power, 62 degrees the ASICs are there. Now the other use case I'm looking at is this loft hatch cover. Um, it's just pieces of board held together with two cross boards and you can just see the staining on there because it does tend to go mouldy and that's really I think because it's so cold um, that water condenses on it and uh, anything that's permanently wet will attract mould. So let's have a look at it through the thermal imaging camera and yes I mean we can see that it's certainly colder 
on the underside of that loft hatch cover than the surrounding ceiling by about three degrees it's not a huge amount it's not a particularly cold day outside today but certainly you can see very clearly on this display uh, that that is colder than its surrounding uh, ceiling parts so it's very easy to see where or why mold is appearing in certain areas and just returning to the cryptocurrency miner um, a day later I've solved the problem you can see from the display here that the system on a chip which is directly under the red marker there uh, currently showing 30 degrees but I had seen that I've just switched this on that had got up to 40 degrees and that's pretty hot for a semiconductor and I think that's why this was crashing so I came up with the solution and it worked and my temporary solution is simply this to just put a fan on that uh, control board and it's blowing air through I've removed the um, faceplate on the other end so we've got airflow through and that now mines continuously without crashing so that's fixed the problem so that's a little look at the Top Don uh, TC004 thermal imaging camera. I will put uh, additional information and links in the description below. But for now, cheerio.